My first career mentor was uh, Dr. Makola Abdullah. He, he had a dramatic impact on my trajectory because he gave me my first job. So he's a professor. I'm like maybe, maybe 16 years old because I remember I could drive. Um, but I had just turned 16. And he gave me a summer job doing research um, as a 16-year-old to work with him. He was in civil engineering. And he had this really big interest in the, um, in the pyramids, the Great Pyramids of, of, of Egypt. And he paid me and a grad student and like I think maybe two other grad students to work on trying to understand how the Great Pyramids were built from a civil engineering perspective for a summer. Blew my mind. I just got to actually do research. First time I got a, like a check, a steady check. I was 16 years old. I was doing something. I was going to a college. I was working. So big deal for me because it you know, opened my mind to what was possible. I only applied to one school for undergrad, um, Florida a and I grew up there, all my friends went there. It just never occurred to me that I would go, go anywhere else. Um, I had, at that time, I had never even heard of MIT. And so this was kind of the start of it. So I managed to get this, this full scholarship. Um, and then fast forward, so now, go to this third bullet point on McCullough. Um, he gave me this critical advice. So summer after I did this SMID project, now I'm like, well, I want to do some, re some more research, but I want to maybe get out, broaden my horizons, go somewhere else, think about something else. And so I, he said, well, you want to be a professor? I said, yes, I want to go that path. He said, all right, if you're going to be a professor, you got to go to grad school, you got to get a PhD. OK. If you're going to be, do a PhD, what's going to get you through the process is loving the work that you're doing. Don't be worried about where the school is. It's a small investment a small amount of years compared to the many years that you'll work in that field, the most important thing is love what you're doing. I said, okay, so how do I do that? He said, well, start trying to read papers. Try to read journal articles. Figure out the topics you're interested in, and don't worry, you're not gonna understand it, but just try. And as you read papers, this advice he gave me was, it's, it's like seminal advice, I always pass it on. He said, read papers. As you read these papers, Certain papers, the titles and what you read, the word, they're going to stand out to you and it's going to be like, that's more interesting than this. Keep track of those papers. After you get a body of those papers, check the last author on those papers. You'll start seeing the same name coming up over and over. You'll start seeing the same name. Find out who that person is, figure out what school they're at, and email them. So I'll never forget. So, I, so I'm reading these papers, reading these papers, and it was around this time I had at least heard of MIT. And one of the names that keeps coming up is Gong Chen. So I'm like, okay, doing stuff with thermal, thermoelectrics, heat, electricity. I thought, find that very fascinating. So let me email Gong Chen. I never, I never forget this. Some, sometimes it's, it's emotional even telling the story because I'm re reliving the experience. I remember the going to the school. We had like these these computers you could use. I go to the school at like 10 a.m. on a Saturday. I'm gonna send this email to Gong Chen. I send the email. Sitting there, listening to some music. 45 minutes later, I get an email back. He says, like your resume, I'd be willing to work with you, but I don't have any money. If you can find funding, I'll be happy to work with you. I said, I'm blown away. I'm like, all right, cool. So let me find some money. So what's the first thing I do? MIT, money, undergraduate research. What's the first thing that pops up? MSRP. So I get excited. I'm like, all right, there's a program. I can get part of a program. I can work with this guy. So I'm excited. So I got into MSRP. Well, I got, did MSRP one summer, applied to MIT, got into MIT. Then I came back to MSRP to do MSRP again the summer before I started grad school because I wanted to get a head start. I wanted to run real fast. I wanted to be the best, best I can. You know, it's good to enjoy what you do. For me, my enjoyment of what I do is ultimately almost fully derived from the potential impact that it will have. So I'm very passionate about mitigating climate change. And you know, I get to get up in every day when I go to work and feel like my job is to save the earth um, and save the human species. Um, that is motivation enough for me. My suggestion is really to think about, I always push students to answer a very, very important question for your whole life, probably the most important question ever answer, which is, why are you here? What is your purpose in life? What is the purpose of life itself? You know, people will debate these kinds of things and often think of them as being age-old questions that no one will ever answer, but it, I will encourage you to 
to accept the possibility that you can answer it for your own life and that that answer does not have to take a lifetime to, to get to. You can actually sit down and think about it and take it a week or two. And if you do that, it has a dramatic impact on the choices you make in life. Because once you're very, very clear on what it is you're doing, why it is you want to do it, and ultimately what your mark is going to be on this earth, you may be presented with lots of opportunities that may take you on a tangent away from what it is your true passion or your true uh, purpose is on this earth. And, but if you're clear about that, you will automatically filter those things. And you may, you may make decisions to, do, to make certain sacrifices to push yourself to go in a certain direction because ultimately it's fed by your true purpose.